this is me. Uh, my name is Rui Costa. I'm a Scrum Master. I started as a computer engineer. I've been a BI guy. I've been a developer in Oracle, and I did a lot of uh, training and certification about Scrum and Agile. And if you didn't notice already, I'm extremely bold, and I'm also a bit lazy. If you want to find me, uh, I'm all over the um, social networks, interwebs, whatever, you can uh, find me there. So I would like to start talking a bit about my journey in, uh, in agility. And as any good journey, it starts with an origin story. So about a couple of years ago, me and my team were finishing up a big data migration project for a client in Africa. And when we finished that project, um, I had the opportunity to start leading the new development team for the new project that my company was going to do. So this was a huge project that we had uh, underway. So it was the biggest project that the company ever had. And who better to go and lead this team than uh, this simple guy? So no experience before, go ahead and try to bring the team. And as anyone that does software development or tries to go into a position of leadership, I try to look ahead and uh, try to see how other people are doing. And this is the way we did projects back in the day. So do you guys know what this is? Hands up, you know, okay? Some people call this the waterfall model. Um, this is a picture taken from the, um, the white paper done, oops, <laughs> done by uh, Dr. Rice uh, back in uh, 1970 about how to manage large-scale software projects. Um, and this was in 1970, so this model is 50 years old. So think about our industry as a whole, like how much our industry changed just in the last five years, let alone in the last 50 years, right? But just because it's an old way of working, it doesn't mean it's a bad way of working. What makes it a bad way of working is the first sentence that Dr. Royce put right after his picture, which he said, I believe in this concept, but the implementation described above is risky and invites failure. But of course, like everyone else, I never read that sentence. I just look at the picture and I knew exactly what I was doing. So I drank from the same Kool-Aid and I was part of the same cult and I committed exactly the same mistakes. So the software, the, this kind of waterfall way of management comes from, bi uh, from construction. So a uh, civil engineer, uh, was the first ones to develop this kind of a waterfall way of working and it was done to construct big things like oil rigs, big buildings, and also to do manufacturing, like building big factories and uh, making cars and uh, all of that good stuff. And because I didn't know the better and no one else knew better, we decided let's put it as well for software development because well, what can go wrong, right? So. Yeah, I didn't know much about it and I committed the same mistakes. I started estimating projects in man hours. I started uh, calling people resources. And yeah, I started moving things around in calendars with the hopes that everything will go okay because if you change it from one day to another arbitrary date, it will work. Like, why wouldn't it, right? It's, it's amazing. And we became so, so, so effective because we liked this so much that we decided let's optimize it even better. Like we decided to pick up this big chunk, this uh, big box that I like to call it the documentation box and we became super efficient at it. Like we understood that, okay, most of these projects are all the same. So we just need to produce documentation. Why don't we just copy paste everything? change the name of a customer there and put one or two lines they defer. So we became extremely good, like lean, mean documentation delivering machines. Um, we are super efficient, but 
the thing is, were we effective? And I like to, to think about these two, the, this, the difference between these two words with a little story that happened around the same time. So me and my friends decided, oh, let's go to Valencia and watch the MotoGP. So we pick up our bikes. We started uh, going from Portugal, went to Valencia, and one of the guys decided, mm, my motorcycle is not that good, I'm going to buy a new one. And he went to Germany and bought a brand new Ducati Multistrada. So it's an amazing machine. And as soon as he got on top of it, GPS, Valencia, goes to the Autobahn, 250 kilometers an hour, and boom, there he goes. It took him one hour to figure out that he was in the wrong, going on the complete wrong direction. So was he efficient? Yes, like he used the machine to the best of his abilities. Was he effective? No. He went two hours off track, like one hour there, and then he needed to one more hour to arrive at the same exact spot. So this was about the same time that I learned about these two, the, the manifesto for agile software development. And I started looking around it because I was thinking that my way of working was efficient, but was it effective? Like in the end, what we wanted to do is to deliver a good product for our customers. And we were being efficient and optimizing, creating documentation. That was a, a bit different. So I started reading about the manifesto and I learned about its values, like individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Sounds amazing, right? People over processes. Really cool. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Oh, this one was a complete slap in my face. Like we were optimizing the, the documentation part and here were some guys telling me, yeah, we should fe be focusing on working software more. Okay, but it makes sense. That's where the value was. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. I was a consultant at the time. So this was another slap in my face. Like, oh my God. Like, are we worrying about delivering the best product to our customer or are we delivering the best change request management process to our customer? So yeah, that was another one that I received. And the last one, responding to change over following a plan. This one was really important because we knew that most of our plans didn't work at the time. Like, we used to have a one-year project, we used to do it for three years. We used to have a six-month project, and we used to do it for nine months. And when I read this one, this was kind of my aha moment. It was like a, a light I turned on, and I figured out, oh, there is another way to do this. And this was just the start of my journey. So I started learning about Agile, and after Agile, I started learning about Scrum. Uh, do you guys know which one came first, Agile or Scrum? One hand for Agile, one hand for Scrum? Okay, I'm doing a workshop tomorrow in the morning, so if you want to figure it out, just drop by. So plugging in my workshop. So Scrum, Scrum is a very interesting framework that is set upon three main pillars. One of the pillars is transparency. Transparency means make visible everything you do. Not because you want to try to hide something from other developers, but because if you make it transparent, what you are doing, maybe the team next to you can learn from you and not commit the same mistakes, right? Inspection. So how many projects did you did before? that after three years, we are going to go and think about the lessons learned. This is inspection. So a good Scrum team and a good Agile team looks back at itself at regular intervals and tries to inspect and understand what they are doing good, what they are doing wrong, where they can improve. And the final pillar, adaptation. Why is adaptation important? Because if you inspect and you see that something is going wrong, well, you better change it, right? Otherwise, there's no point in doing it. But the most important part about Scrum is the Scrum team. And with the Scrum team and high-performance teams, 
you get a team that follows five core values. And these are the five core values of Scrum. So the first core value is commitment. So a good Scrum team is committed. Not committed to delivering story points by the end of the sprint or committed by reaching an arbitrary date. No. This team is committed by delivering a goal. So it's committed by delivering business value to a customer. The second one is courage. A good team needs to have courage. Courage to say no when things are going wrong or when things don't make sense to do, like what we were doing. A lot of documentation that provided zero value. We didn't know it at the time, but we should have had the courage to say no. This is not going to provide any value to our customers. We need to stop and we need to do something else. Focus. Oh, this one starts. Oh, okay, cool. It was supposed to be one letter, but never mind. Focus. Focus on the sprint goal. So if you are doing interactions of one to four weeks, each one of them has a different goal, and the Scrum team should be focusing on this goal. So it's not like doing four projects at the same time and being 25% allocated to each project, we all know that that doesn't work. So we need to be focused on doing one thing from start to finish. And also openness. Similar to transparency, openness is a part of the team that is really important. It's important because I you need to have the openness to share knowledge, to share what you're doing, to have like a conference like we are having today. But not just that, having the openness to share your, your challenges, your problems, to make aware to the whole organization the problems that you are facing so that people can help you also to fix them. And last but not least, respect. I think respect is something that we all have as professionals, but this is very important. You need to respect your colleagues and respect not only their strengths, but also their weaknesses. Because even if we work together, we are not experts on everything. There will be someone that will be better than others at doing one thing, and he may fail at doing others. So you need to respect them and help them. But I think we all do this one, right? So that's not a, a big issue. But this is my passion. So this is the passion that brought me here, that brought me here today to share with all of you what has been my, my journey with agility. My mom used to say that if you don't like something, do something about it. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't like the way we were working, so I decided to change it. I decided to become a Scrum Master. And I did this because I believe that truly there are other ways that we can work that provide better value and that can make us happier in the workplace. So I hope to inspire you today. This is basically an inspirational talk that I came here. And my goal is that, to inspire you today. And if nothing else, to plant on you the seed, just a small little seed that life is short and we should be doing stuff that matters not building documentation. And maybe today, who knows, it could be also the start of your origin story. So thank you very much.